Hey there and welcome to a new Blender tutorial. In my last glass tutorial you asked me basically to make a Pokal glass to show you how to make that. So in this one I'm going to just do that. First of all I'm going to import my reference image if I can find it of course. I don't know where I put it. Right here. Just drag it in and that should be good to go. Now press Alt G and Alt R, RX90. I'm going to, again, I can't leave a uh, a link in the description where you can download this image, but I'm going to leave the name of the glass uh, in the name of the video and also the description so you can find it yourself. So now what we need to do would be to go to edit, preferences, add-ons, and then search for loop tools. So just look here for loop tools, check the box and you should be good to go. Next up, we're going to actually start modeling this thing. So press Shift A, import a circle where it, uh, it might not expand this for you, so it might look like this. Click on it, and for vertices, we need nine vertices. G, Z, bring it down and scale it up until it meets the reference. Now press Tab to enter edit mode, press E for extrude, Z to restrain it to the Z axis, and bring it up like so. So now we're going to scale it up a little, bring it up a little bit more so it meets the reference a little bit better. Maybe scale this down a little bit and that should be good to go. I'm going to press the number two above my letterbox and uh, you can also click on this icon here if you want. I'm going to select the top, select the bottom and press F3 then look for subdivide. That will basically add another edge down the straight face here so we don't have to do it manually now what we can do would be to go into the wireframe shading press ctrl r to add an a loop cut and bring it up to about here where you can see those rims here uh, they start forming so these little spikes here so next up what i'm going to do would be to press the number one and Basically, what we're going to do is press F3 again and search for checker, deselect. Now you can see it selects the outside uh, outside points. We basically want to do the opposite. So we're going to go to the offset and select 0 or 1, depending on what it's stating for you. We basically want the center things here. So now I'm going to press G twice, so GG. That's going to restrain it to the edges I'm going to bring it up until it meets the top of the arch here so now we should be good to go what I'm going to do now would be to go back to the edge selection mode by pressing 2 Control, alt and click to select everything here f3 checker deselect and we want to set the offset so that we only get the outside edges not the front facing edges shift Control, alt click to do the same on the top, but checker deselect won't work, so we're going to manually deselect the center edges. Like so. Now I'm going to select this here as well, and we're going to bevel this. So press Ctrl B, scroll your mouse wheel up once to get one more segment, and basically this here should be just about fine. So that's it. I'm going to press W and shade smooth. And now you see nothing of the arch here. But we're going to get that sorted out just in a bit. So what we're going to do would be to, oops, go into this view again, add another edge loop. So control R, press E. It's going to conform it to one side of the, uh, of the loop. So right now it has the wrong side. I want to press F for flip and now it's completely straight and bring it somewhere over here because you see here it's a little bit thicker than down here now i want to basically make this a circle so i'm going to press n if this side panel is not open press n go to edit loop tools expand it circle and now it should be circular do the same here on the top so circle and now you can see it is a little bit more circular press s to scale this 
and bring it out like so. And now you can see we get the basic shape of the glass going. And now the shading is really weird and we're going to fix that by just giving it more subdivision that also makes it a little bit rounder. So that is really, really nice. I'm going to basically add in one more edge loop here, press E again. Now for me, it flipped to the right side. If it's looking like this, just press F and bring it up to right about here. And now you can add a few more to even out the spacing of the quads so that they are more uh, that they are less rectangular and more squarish. Do the same here on the top, just like this, and that should be good to go. Now, if you don't like the sharpness or the way this here looks, you can press GG on this here or even this here, and that will really, whoops, this here, and that will really change the sharpness. Let me show you of this here, so you can really play around with it and get a value that you like. For me, this here looks good enough which is fairly close to this here. So I will stick with this. Next up, I'm going to delete the reference because we don't need it anymore. I'm going to basically press E, S and bring this in quite a bit. Then F3 and click for grid fill. Now this here looks like that. Press circle to make it a bit less weird. And now you should be good to go. I can bevel this here. Like so. It doesn't have to be precise or anything like that. It's just to give it a little bit more rounding. I'm going to scale this out because you can see those quads here, they're pretty narrow. So we can even them out by just scaling up the outer rim. And now it looks like this, which is really, really cool. Uh, we basically got the basic shape of the glass, but now we need the inside. So I'm going to select this here. And I'm going to disable subdivision for this uh, task. E, S, bring it in. Something like this. They have usually pretty thick walls. Oops, that was not the one I, want. I meant to click. I wanted to click on this. So this X-ray view. Bring it down, E, Z, then bring it down to like over here. Leave more space towards the bottom than you leave towards the edges of the glass because the bottom always needs to be thicker than the rest. So I'm going to press E, S. Now we can disable the onion skinning or the X-ray. So S, grid fill again. And again, I'm going to make this here a little bit wider and bevel this. Now that looks basically fine. Now your normals might be inverted. So one quick way we can check that would be where you have those two circles. There is a arrow pointing down face orientation. If it's red, then the faces are or the normals are facing the wrong direction. So one way you can fix this would be to select everything in edit mode, press shift N. Now everything is blue, so everything is fine. Turn that off again. And this is what your result should look like. Now, this is a really sharp lip, so I wouldn't really recommend leaving it like this. I'm going to add a bunch more faces in here. You don't need to add this many. If you want to cut down on geometry, you can basically add in one loop cut and bevel this like so you would get a similar result but if you want to have like a more cinematic sort of um object you i would recommend having more faces even though it's going to increase your render times by a little bit i don't think it's really that bad so you can either leave it like this because some uh, some cups really do look like this they have like just a rounded lip um but what I usually recommend, whoops, I didn't mean to save this. By the way, you should increase the viewport and uh, render level. You don't need to increase the viewport, but the render level to 3 because you can still see on close-ups, you have some jagged edges. So if you increase it to 3, there is like a really, really good quality, which you cannot even make that much better by increasing it to 4. So 3 is really a nice number. 
I'm going to add an ellipse just to show you how you can do it. You can leave it like this. Uh, on some glasses it does even look like this, which isn't really optimal, but it cuts down on cost and manufacturing time. So some companies will leave it like that. So what I basically did was, didn't explain it, sorry. Uh, I added in an edge loop, control R, bring it in, confirm with left click right on the top. Now press 3 to get into face selection mode or click on this icon here. Alt E to extrude the faces along the normals. Bring it out a little bit. Press number 2 or this icon here. Now select this here. X and dissolve the edge. Basically what that does is gives you an artificial lip. And once you leave uh, edit mode or turn on this here, you will see you get this sort of lip which I'm going to actually bring up here and bring in here. So it's less noticeable, but it's still there. So yeah, that is fine. Now you just basically need to scale it down. Whoops, I saved again. That is just a habit. You go to units, metric, and length, meters, centimeters, uh, or choose whatever you want. I think they're about 14 centimeters tall but I'm not really sure. You can look it up on the internet. I think it's 14. So we're looking for the Z axis to meet 14 centimeters. Something like this. And there you go. Control A, apply the scale and rotation. Now this scale should be reset to just about one. Now I'm going to give it a ground plane, give it a camera. Well, GR, X, 90, bring it back, 0 to enter the camera view, same old stuff as usually, go into cycles, add an, an HDRI, I'm doing this here really quickly because it's not actually part of the tutorial, should be able to do that, give this here basic material, And now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to split the view here because I already have a pre-made material for this which you can check out in the description down below how to do that. Oops, that is not the one I wanted. Uh, asset browser, uh, user library, materials, glass, 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 glass. There, dispersion glass looks basically like this. Let me see. 90 basically it gives this dispersion glass effect which is really really cool so if you want you can recreate this glass or just use a normal glass bsdf it's really up to you but usually what those glasses all have in common is a coloration they're either blue or kind of pink -ish or reddish so I'm going to go for blue, give this a really big value. If you're wondering why it's called Steve, it's because uh, I'm kind of lazy. So yeah, just about like this, you can really tweak it to your liking. I'm going to mark this like that. GPU computing, so it's a little bit faster. And usually the dispersion isn't really that high in those glasses so i'm going to make it a lot lower so yeah this is how you really get a nice dispersion uh and pokal glass thing i hope you liked it and um if you did leave a like leave a comment or leave a suggestion what you would like to see next and uh i will try to do that so yo without any further to do i will see you in the next one bye bye